The Galactic Empire was responsible for some of the most abhorrent crimes in galactic history. But despite the incredibly obvious evil of the Empire, there were a number of beings in the galaxy that revered it and its ideology. Their favorite tactic for justifying this involved whitewashing one particular figure, Emperor Palpatine. These Imperial apologists and some extremely misguided fans like to argue that Palpy just wanted what's best for the galaxy and that his crimes were a necessary evil. And while a lot of that apologist drivel isn't worth wasting brain cells on, there's one Imperial apologist narrative that's worth examining. This theory holds that everything Palpatine did was actually meant to prepare the galaxy for the Yuuzhan Vong invasion, and that he was a necessary evil meant to strengthen the galaxy against a far greater one. In this video, we'll be examining this narrative in detail. Attention, Sergeant on deck! To illustrate this theory, we're going to pull some passages from Mithril and Ruudu Reconsidered, a Patriot's perspective, which is where the theory comes from in the first place. Without further ado, I'm baffled by critics who ignore what Thrawn reported Palpatine believed, that the weak Republic would be destroyed by the Yuuzhan Vong, and that it had to be reforged into an orderly, militarized society able to resist them. They refused to consider the possibility that the Empire's apparent brutality and ruthlessness were necessary parts of preparing for that terrible war. Why did they refuse to do so? Because that would lead them to the only logical conclusion, that Palpatine was right. Recent galactic history is not the struggle for freedom our children are force-fed on Holonet channels controlled by Mothmatist news agencies. Rather, it's a succession of unlucky events that left our civilization defenseless against the Vong. The second Death Star promised to eliminate the sedition and separatism of the rebellion, but it was destroyed and the Emperor was betrayed and slain, forced into an agonizing convalescence on Biss. During his long absence, a continuation of the destructive conflict between the Empire and the rebellion battered down the galaxy's defenses. The Mothmatists see these events as victories, but if they were honest, they would see them for what they really were. Missed chances to prevent the ruin of so much that we held dear. Our Emperor and our Grand Admiral were taken from us before their plans could be brought to fruition, and as a result, we stood naked before the Yuuzhan Vong and the bleak destiny they sought for us. To sum up, the theory is that Palpatine knew the Yuuzhan Vong were coming and militarized the galaxy so that it would be prepared to fight them off, only for these plans to be dashed when the Empire was destroyed and replaced by the less militarized New Republic. Now, the proper response to hearing something like this is to say, cry harder, Imperial scum, but let's take this screed seriously for a second because there's a few bits of truth in it. Palpatine did actually know the Yuuzhan Vong were coming well before the Clone Wars, and it's true that he allied with Thrawn over the shared goal of stopping the invasion. Additionally, if you're familiar with the history of the old Sith Wars, you'd know that there was actually a precedent for a Sith Lord trying to turn the Republic into an Empire to militarize it in preparation for a worse threat. That was what Darth Revan tried to do during the Jedi Civil War. However, Palpatine wasn't Revan, and his goals were far different from what he claimed to Thrawn. First and foremost, Palpatine didn't give a Sith about protecting the galaxy. He was a complete psychopath, and from long before he knew what the Yuuzhan Vong were, long before he even joined the Sith, his sole motivation in life was a desire for ultimate power, no matter what the cost of that was. He never wavered from that. He was the Dark Lord of the Sith after all, and that was the core ideological message of the Sith Order. Palpatine also relished in the suffering of others, such that one of his pastimes during his reign as Emperor was growing life forms for the sole purposes of killing them for entertainment later. As he detailed in his book, The Weakness of Inferiors, he believed that all other life forms were so far inferior to him that they had no purpose other than his amusement. But if Palpatine was entirely self-interested, why did he seemingly care about stopping the Vong? Was he just lying to Thrawn to get the Chiss strategist on his side? He probably wasn't, seeing as he gave Thrawn broad authority to build his own vassal empire, the Empire of the Hand, with the express purpose of fighting off the Vong. No, Palpatine likely did want to stop the Vong at the galaxy's edge, but not for any sort of selfless reason. He planned to build an empire with him as its supreme ruler long before he knew the Yuuzhan Vong existed, 
and he feared that the Rong would be able to destroy his power base if he didn't prepare for their arrival. Palpatine didn't care that the galaxy would suffer during a Vong invasion, he cared that he would suffer. Even then, Palpatine's empire building was actually counterproductive to defense against the Yuuzhan Vong. Imperial apologists loved to blame the Rebel Alliance and the subsequent New Republic for throwing the galaxy into chaos with their insurrections and dismantling of Imperial institutions, but the truth was that the Empire was actually to blame for the galaxy's weakness after the Galactic Civil War. Contrary to the image it liked to promote, the Empire was massively inefficient and not even remotely orderly. It replaced a corrupt, failing system of bureaucrats and politicians with an even more corrupt and even less effective system of bureaucrats and useless, nepotistic warlords. The Empire cannibalized the decently decentralized federalist system of the Republic and turned it into a clusterfrack that was completely dependent on a rigid military hierarchy made up of career generals who cared more about seeming powerful than doing anything useful. It took the death of exactly one man to shatter this entire hierarchy into a mess of warlord states that fought each other as much as the New Republic. And you can't even blame the Rebel Alliance for that breakdown. Palpatine would have died eventually, after all, and whenever he did, the same thing would have happened. The Empire made the mess, and it fell to the New Republic to be the adult in the room and try pick up the pieces. A tough job made even harder by the incessant war with the various Imperial remnants. What makes the whole idea of rebels destroying the Empire's nice, orderly system for no reason even worse is that it blames the rebels for not wanting to be oppressed. The Empire brutalized trillions of beings. It subjected wide swaths of the rim to over-exploitation, suspension of basic rights, and even genocide. If a government does those sorts of things to a population and the population rises up, responsibility for the conflict falls squarely on the government's shoulders. The Empire started the Galactic Civil War with two decades of brutal oppression, and the rebellion was just the consequences of those policies. Furthermore, there's one last point that makes this Palpatine simping absolutely disgusting. Even if Palpatine had the galaxy's best interests at heart, and even if the rule of the Empire and militarization of the galaxy would have slowed the Vong advance, that's just not an acceptable justification for the crimes of the Empire and its Emperor. The whole line about how the Empire's brutality toughened up the galaxy to face the Vong was flat out wrong, but even if it wasn't, that brutality was still unacceptable in any circumstance. There's no justification for the destruction of Alderaan, the scourging of Kamas, and the enslavement of Kashyyyk, or Palpatine's monstrous experiments on Biss. There's no justification for the brutal repression of the Outer Rim under the jackboot of the Imperial military, no justification for the trillions murdered, enslaved, or imprisoned. It's all evil, and so were the beings who orchestrated it, regardless of the surrounding circumstances. And that's without examining Palpatine's personal crimes, many of which were entirely unrelated to the Vong, or even strengthening the Empire, even by the mental gymnastics of Empire Simps. The galaxy was not made stronger by his luring billions of Imperial subjects to Biss so he could use them as mindless walking force batteries. He did nothing to prepare the galaxy for the Vong when, upon his return to the world of the living via a clone body, he went crazy and started blowing up random planets with his galaxy gun instead of doing anything strategically productive for the Empire. I mean, come on, we're talking about a dude who ran over pedestrians as a teenager solely to make his dad's life harder. Palpatine was nothing if not evil. The Empire did literally nothing right. Even the most mundane stuff it tried to do usually ended up being messed up by officer infighting and doing damage to the galaxy in some way. If there's just one thing you take away from this video, make it that. Anyway, what do you think? Would you like to see us dunk on the Empire more in the future? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below because I'm sure there'll be a bunch of them. As always guys, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.